You stay up there. Stay up there. than me. Uh, uh. Thank goodness for good old Kentucky snuff. <laughs> truly a blessing or a curse to grow old. But oh, I, I sure do long for them exciting days of my youth in this here state that you all call Kentucky. How I long for, for the smell of the deep woods, for they come in here and cut out all the big timbers and... I've sat up here on Limestone Creek all winter, just a hoping maybe one of you will come get me and us get down yonder on the river in the canoe on a frosty morning. I love to ride along and paddle in the canoe in that frost. He'd, he'd gather up on your forehead and make an old man feel alive and still use for something. Yeah, I reckon I even miss that feeling of panic that I kept for so many years after I cut and run from old Virginia. Uh, knowing that I had done, went, and killed Willie Leachman. Now, people's always telling me, Simon Kenton, you a rambling old fool. <laughs> yeah, now I know I often talk up in circles and I reckon I'm probably losing a little memory. But I promise you, if and you'll prod me just the least little bit, I'll do my best to, to finish each and every old story that I get started. Now that's what you're here for, ain't it? Listen to an old man tell tales. I'm going to get this out of the way right quick, like. I didn't care much for schooling as a lad. I just couldn't see no use in it. It seemed like all my head wanted to think about was a roaming in, in the woods. And, oh, I love to shoot them tree rats. You and will call them squirrels. And, oh, I love to, to search out a, a bee tree and, and rob the bees of that, of that honey and such like that. But there ain't no way that I can tell any of you how much it's cost me in later years to not have a formal education. Now you tell your young ones, you make sure they stay in school. It's important. No matter how fed up they get, 
or how party the weather is and they'd rather uh, stay at home and run in the woods. Make them, make them go. Make them go. I hated the drudgery of farm life. My folks, they moved in here from Ireland. They as farmers always hated this time of year because it seemed like as soon as the whippoorwills went to holler, they'd come rouse me out to bed before the sun was up, <laughs> order me to get out there behind the, the plow, you know, and wanted me to pick up every little old rock that they was a turning out of that new plowed ground. I wanted to drive the mule. <laughs> no, I had to grab them rocks. And then after the rocking was done, put a hole in my hand. Oh, they'd send me down them big long rows of corn there. Oh, I had to chop row after row after row. And then after that corn is all uh, chopped out there, then the splitting mall. Oh, I had to split this terrible lot of, of them chestnut rails that we stacked up, you know, into the fences and sex like that. Uh, oh, I hated it. But now I was about 15 when I fell in love with her. <laughs> Ellen Cummings. Ooh, fellers. Lord, what a beauty. Now, I always did like pretty women, you know. But, but now, Miss Ellen, now she was the first thing in my life that, now, you fellers, you know what I'm talking about here. You, you know in the spring of the year when an old sow bear, she comes out the cave, you know, been hibernating. Oh, and just about the time you see her, she'll have two little cubs. Oh, and you know how much fun they are to play with. They roly-poly, and she busy. She hungry. She ain't paying no attention to you. But you know, after a while, she smells you. Here she'll come. Oh, 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 oh. Boy, and you got to take off and maybe take to a tree and your heart gets to pounding up in your, your chest, you know. Well, now that's what Miss Ellen done to me. <laughs> I fell head over heels in love with her. But it sure didn't take me long to figure out Ellen Cummins was sure more dangerous than there is she bear. <laughs> Pain. Grief. Oh, it killed me. It killed me when she married him. Willie Leachman. <coughs> it is an awful thing to do. But I couldn't help it. I had to call him out. And call him out at their wedding, I did. <laughs> oh, I had her coming. I had him to come, and I sure did. But, Lord, you all, he whooped me. <laughs> Why, he whooped me soundly. And I had insults to all my injuries. It seemed like it was in front of everybody in Fauquier County, Virginia. Well, sir, sprung a leak, didn't I? <laughs> Good tools. They was awful rare in them days. My pa. He knew the leachmans had him a felling saw. Oh, it was a good one. One of them big, long, cross-cut two-man saws. Well, he sent me to, over to White Rock Ridge to borrow that felling saw from the leachmans. And I went in over there and talked to the old man, you know, and told him what I'd come for, Daddy wanting to, to borrow the saw. And he, oh, I couldn't hardly believe it. I heard him holler, Hey, Will! Come in here and go over with Simon Kenton on the ridge jar and fetch that felling saw. <clears throat> oh, I started to watch him. We started to walking down that little old trail liar out that ridge, you know. Boy, I got to watch him. I wanted to get back in there where they couldn't nobody see us. 
I got a little bit in front of me, Meyer, and I wound me up a haymaker, and I come around here, and I walked him with all I had, and the fighting, it was back on. <laughs> now, now, I need to back up here a minute. Since that day of my whooping, oh, now, I'd been a whole lot more willing to work. Why, I, they wouldn't nobody had to rouse me out in the morning. I'd jump to my feet, and I'd fall in behind that old mule, I wasn't a grabbing them little noggins. Them was for the young boys. Only the biggest old rocks for me, and I'd grab every one of them, and I'd carry them plumb across the field and stack them on that fence. I was a wiring the whole handle out in that corn patch, row after row. Well, I'd split me a terrible lot more rail. I didn't wait for nobody to stack the fence, and I was stacking them rails on them fences. Anything, anything I could think of to make me grow bigger and stronger. Word is even around our little old bird there on Bull Run Mountain. Believe that leechman boy, he has done went and knocked some sense into Simon Kenton's thick old Irish skull. <laughs> little did Ari and one of them have Ari a notion. It is all in anticipation of this here very day. Well, I got to tell you, when I walked him upside the head, well, all it did is make him mad. Why, well, he proceeded to thrash me again. <laughs> Why, well, he is awful. She is, he's a roaring the, the, the ground out with me, you know. And oh I, oh, I had to do something, you know. And he hit me so hard, I seen stars. But out the corner of my eye, I seen this. This, it was a bush, you know. One of them thorny bushes had a fork on it about that high up and off to the ground. Thought occurred to me. Now, if I could ease us over there while we is a-fighting. He had a big old long cue of har, you know. And if I could get his har, and if I could get it wrapped up in that bush, the day would be mine. <laughs> Boy, here he comes. I mean, here, I turned my head just in time. He about tore my ear off anyway. But I heard his knuckles crumple up on the ground. And when I did, I dug my heels in and I shoved. But that bush, he just jinxed out of my reach. <clears throat> Titus reached around here and I bit a plug out of him. Hey! I got him I scooting and I got his high and got her up in that bush and with all that pent up fury that been a building in me, I went to oh, 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 oh. All human mercy, sanity, it left me. I reckon, I reckon there in a little while, I must have come back to my senses. And it come a flooding back in to me what an awful thing I had done. Why, well, he is laid there. He is kivered up with blood. Oh, I went to trying to roust him about, you know. He just laid there limp. Well, limp as a rag. Get up, Willie. Get up. Oh, oh, I, I, Oh, I started to get worried, and, 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 and I put my ear right down here where I could hear him. He wasn't breathing. Well, I've done went and killed Willie Leach. Get up, Willie. Get up. And I just sat down there on the ground with him, and, 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 and I sat there a long time, and, and every little bit I'd, I'd shake on him. Willie, get up. Get up. And, oh, Lord, I'd killed him. I'd killed him, and... and All I could think about, seemed like, was this old man. Every one of you now, I want you to think back to when you was a young and about this tall. Every one of you that's in here are listening to me. And if you think back there, they are some old man that liked to aggravate you, wouldn't they? 
Every one of you. There's some old man, he'd like to aggravate you when you... Well, this old fella, he'd come to our cabin there, and he'd go, Young Kenton, Ari a feller got many moles up on their neck as you do, and I've got a pile there. Surely gonna hang by the neck someday. He, 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 he. Why, it wasn't funny then, and it sure wasn't funny now. Why, that old man's prediction. Why, it doesn't come in true. Why, I'd kill Willie Leachman. Why, they is, they is gonna hang me. Oh, I kept a thinking I, I need to go on back and own up to it. And about the time I'd decide that that's what I'd better do, why, that noose, I'd feel her. It'd go to tighten it up around my neck. So at the young age of 16 years and seven days, I didn't tell nary a soul. I left my home. I left my family. And I lived out and I headed west. 